Hello everyone and welcome to your own channel Let's Talk Business once again. As always, I'm excited to have you here. Today in this video presentation, we are going to discuss about the Lloyd's Risk Exchange. So what happened recently on 26th of February, Lloyd published its first update on the Blueprint 1. And in this update, they are actually talking about that they have done with the transition phase and now they are having certain things in their clear focus for 2020. So basically for 2020, they are building a detailed plan for phase 1 delivery. They have already prioritized the work stream on which they are going to focus. They have secured 300 million pound of birth Budget for this initiative, the Future at Lloyd's initiative, almost like 1000 stakeholders are involved and they have set up governance body which will see the overall program. So without any doubt, there is a lot to know and a lot to discuss. So without waiting more, let's start talking business. As I said earlier, in this video presentation, we are going to discuss about the Lloyd's 2020 top priority with respect to Future at Lloyd's. So they have three components which they prioritize for 2020. The first one is Lloyd Risk Exchange, including the digital cover holder solution. They also prioritize the complex risk platform and the claim solution. And on top of these three components, they have also prioritized three more items, which is essential for the Future at Lloyd's infrastructure point of view. The underlying data and technology, the middle and back office Office operations which including the accounting and settlement and they are also revamping the way they they place the risk which they call as a modern syndication of risk but for this video presentation we are going to focus only on the Lloyd risk exchange and in this we are going to see what is this LRE and what are the various component of this LRE and all those information so for those who are new to my channel, I am Ravi Shankar. I am having more than 16 years of experience in business analysis, largely associated with PNC and general insurance domain and currently practicing within the Lloyds of London. And if you have any query related to this video presentation or my previous video presentation, you can reach me at my Hotmail or LinkedIn profile. You can also connect me on my Twitter account. And if you want the PDF of this presentation, you can connect me on my Telegraph channel. So once again, thanks a lot for all your emails, all your queries, all your suggestions. I love them all. Now going forward, what is Lloyd Risk Exchange basic? So the Lloyd Risk Exchange is a digital exchange that connects to the existing system or provide a new user interface that enable the instant search quote bind issue for less complex risk. Now you have to understand less complex risk, improving the speed speed to the placement and the customer experience. Now, improving the speed to the placement and the customer experience is the center of this initiative. We'll talk about this, what is this less complex risk and what is the definition of less complex risk and other aspect of LRE. So why Lloyd Risk Exchange basically? So if you can see here, Lloyd Risk Exchange will allow Lloyd distribution partners, including broker and cover holder to link their front end sales system into the central exchange which automatically find the possible coverages solution for their customer. This risk exchange will deliver the straight through processing for a relatively simple high volume and low premium cases. Right now in Lloyd's almost half of the risk traded through Lloyd's today are relatively simple high volume and low premium cases and traditionally these have been placed through binder authority or line slip. I will talk about the binder and line slip later on this presentation but you have to understand half of the risk is simple straightforward high volume low premium cases. So what basically is happening here is there is a huge potential to parameterize this risk and Lloyd will only able to benefit from this opportunity if it can access to the wider customer base and handle their risk more efficiently and economically. So what will happen here is the risk exchange will make the Lloyd more efficient so that the market participant can spend more time on sourcing new distribution and developing new product and provide value added services to their customer and they will reduce the overall turnaround time going forward. So we have to understand what is the simple risk. The risk where the rating engine can provide quick quote based on the predefined algorithms. Now here you have the coverages defined and risk defined 
and based on certain input parameters, this rating engine will compute the code based on some predefined algorithm. So basically here we are talking about very straightforward, simple products. Say for example, the motor policy. The properties of the motor policy is fairly predefined. If you have risk information for policyholder and your vehicle, then you can actually parameterize these variables into the algorithm to get the predefined code. The second thing is about where the standard coverage terms and condition are readily available without extensive discussion. So in this, the coverages and terms and definition are already defined. There is no need to have a further discussion with the underwriters. One of the classical example of this type of risk is travel policy. So travel policy generally comes in plan mode, say for example, bronze, silver, gold and platinum and within this plan their coverages, terms and definitions are almost defined. So you just need to opt for this plan and once you opt this plan the standard terms and conditions and the limits will automatically be opted. You can't modify the terms easily. The third important point is where the information related to the risk like policy holder data can be obtained from the external source easily. So say for example in country like Malaysia you can obtain the NCB which is no claim bonus for the motor insurance policy from the external source. You can also get the policy holder information from the external source. So if you have the option to obtain policy holder data and the risk data which will help you to issue the policy then that particular risk will qualify as a simple risk. The fourth point is where is there is no need to conduct a on-site visit before the coverage. In some cases the situation is complex enough that before issuing the insurance coverage you have to visit the premises to understand the risk better and if you have a relatively simple risk which doesn't require any sort of uh, visit before the coverage then those risks will qualify as a simple risk. Going forward, so what this LRE will have? What are the various components of Lloyd's Risk Exchange? The first component is about the flexible access to the risk exchange. Now here, what they're talking about, the flexibility of this risk exchange. So for those brokers and cover holder who is having their own policy administration system and can use APIs, then they can use the API to connect to the Lloyd's Risk Exchange and if they don't have the feature of APIs, then the Lloyd Risk Exchange will provide them an interface by which they can access the various products and coverages within the risk exchange. The other important component of this LRE is configurator and this is basically a place where the cover holder and the syndicate will go and define their product. So once they define their product in, in the configurator, then they can access the product and do the business more easily. So this configurator will be very powerful in terms of defining new product. The third important point is about the instant code from the rating engine. Now, as I said earlier, Lloyd Risk Exchange will have the rating algorithm in place. And if the risk is simple enough, then this rating engine will provide them a code instantaneously. Fourth important point is connection to the chorus and the DA set. I'll talk about what are the challenges, what is this chorus and DSLs later on in this presentation. Third important pro point is about the reporting. LRE will provide a very important and powerful reporting feature and then they can also able to issue the certificate from the LRE. Going forward, now here they're talking about two things. So in earlier version, they are talking about only the Lloyd Risk Exchange, but after 26th February update, they put including digital cover holder solution. But before getting into the digital cover holder solution, let's talk about the business and the business concept. So what is delegated authority is all about? Delegate authority in generic insurance sense is when an insurer permit the other party to act on his behalf to manage an underwriting and claim. So basically you have one insurer and this insurer has actually given his authority to another insurer to manage the underwriting and claim on the principal behalf. So delegate authority is an agreement where a managing agent delegates his authority to a third party in order to enter into the contract of insurance on his behalf. Cover holder under the term of binding authority is the most common way to do a business through delegate authority way. So we will talk about 
what is cover holder, what is binding authority in subsequent slide. So what is cover holder basically? Now the cover holder means a company or a partnership authorized by the managing agent to enter into the contract or contract of insurance to be underwritten by the member of the syndicate managed by it. Now all cover holder must be approved by the Lloyds. Cover holder may be based in any country where the local regulation permits, may enter into the contract of insurance and issue policy document on behalf of a managing agent under the binding authority. So some facts here, till 2018, there was 3,936 cover holder producing approximately 30% of the Lloyd's business. So very important business and that's the reason for 2020 they have put their special attention to cover holders and then you have a different level of underwriting which cover holder can enjoy say for example full authority predefined rate and no discretion and no prior submission so i have already created a whole video presentation for this cover holder and delegate authority business which you can view by clicking on the information bar on top of this video presentation so i recommend to go and watch that video presentation going forward what is binding authority so binding authority is basically is an agreement between the managing agent and the cover holder under which the managing agent delegates his authority to enter into the contract of insurance to be underwritten by the member of syndicate managed by it to the cover holder in accordance with the terms and condition which is agreed so as i said earlier he is a managing agent and here is the cover holder. The cover holder, the managing agent is in UK. The cover holder is in USA. The managing agent in order to tap their business in USA, they will give some sort of authority to the, to the cover holder in USA. And this authority is predefined. All the terms and conditions are defined. And this cover holder will write business on the basis of managing agent, which is based out of UK. So this is the arrangement of binding authority. Now the binding authority agreement will also set out the cover holder other responsibilities such as handling insurance monies or agreeing claims and manage claims in their own way. Going forward, what is cover holder solution then? So the cover holder solution is a revised digital solution that will improve the cover holder experience and enable easier access to the Lloyd's market. And this is the key part of the Lloyd's research chain. Now you have to understand the cover holder is providing 30% of the overall Lloyd's business and which is like 10 billion pounds. So they cannot ignore it. And in order to tap this potential, right, they have prioritized this cover holder solution. So say for example, the, the delegate authority and cover holder business, if you talk specifically, the, the Lloyd research chain effort are more focused on the DA and the cover holder business because they bring more than 30% of their total business and more focused to develop the chorus and the DA set platform and integrate this platform into the LRE. So say for example, here you have LRE and then here you have chorus. And then you have DA sets, and then this DA sets will get connected to the LRE, and this is one of their top priorities for 2020. And why they wanted to do this? Because they once they wanted to do because they wanted to streamline this operation, and second, they wanted to achieve the truly data for solution. What does it mean? I mean, what is truly data for solution? Truly data for solution is the solution where you are solely relying on the quality of the data what you are capturing, not on the PDF document, not on the Word document purely on the data, the fine quality data, which will help you to do more informed decision and have a better understanding about the risk and overall portfolio. Now let's talk about what is this chorus platform. So what is happening earlier, if you want to hire any cover holder, then the cover holder has to go to many different uh, procedures. Some are online, some are offline. So basically what it has to do, it has to go and log into the Atlas platform. And then once the binding authority is issued, the binding authority has to be registered under the bar. So basically this chorus platform is going to replace this act at the bar near future. So Chorus platform was initially inducted within the Lloyd's Tom program, target operating model program. So because there's Atlas involved, there's bar involved, there's a lot of offline online processes. And because of this, you will have a lot of inconsistent data, duplicate effort, multiple data error and slow and inefficient process. 
So I have already created a whole video presentation on this. You can click on the information bar on top of this video presentation to access that content. I'll highly recommend you to go and watch if you want to understand what is bar, what is Atlas and what is Chorus platform. Chorus is basically a software which is provided by a company called SQL which is based out of UK. So once they adopt the Chorus platform, then managing the entire thing become very easy. You know, you have a managing agent connected to the chorus, you have a broker connected to the chorus, Lloyd's Corporation connected to the chorus, and the cover holder is also connected to the chorus. And with the help of this chorus, you know, they can able to manage the data, they can able to connect to the aims, they can able to connect to the Lloyd system easily. So you have a very single central a place which will able to do most of the work when it comes to the cover holder business uh, point of view. And then with the help of Chorus, you can have a better data quality, less key-in, which means the less errors, connected system, and then more efficient processes. So I'll highly recommend you to go, go back and see my video presentation on DSS and Delegate Authority business by clicking on the information icon on top of this video. The second important thing is about the DSATS platform. So DSAT stands for Delicate Authority Submission Access and Transformation Services. So what was happening? So you have inducted a cover holder in US and this US cover holder is giving you a business but how he is reporting, the, the way he is reporting the business is very tedious. You know, sometimes he is sending Excel, sometimes sending Word, some, sometimes he is sending the information directly to the managing agent, sometimes he is sending information directly to the broker and the entire process is very cumbersome and inefficient. So in order to, to remove this these inefficiencies under the LM Tom program, the Lloyds adopted something called a DA set. DA set is nothing but a child seller tied platform. And with the help of this DA set, the entire data will be streamlined in a way that it can, it can give a meaningful insight of the information which is flowing in. So which will help the managing agent to do a better underwriting and better decision making. And Broken can able to see more insight and provide better services to the customer and the cover holders and the TPAs. So click on the information bar to see more information about the DSRs. This is the risk exchange all about. In the center of the risk exchange, you will have a front end system if you are not able to access risk exchange through API. And then you have a standard product and the product configuration, instant search code and bind functionality reporting dashboard. And this risk exchange will be access via the API gateway, which means that the cover holders or brokers can able to access this risk exchange with the help of API if their system allow. Similarly, the product can be defined by the syndicate in their own system and a rating algorithm can be defined in their own system, which can be accessed through the API gateway within the large risk exchange. And then the phase two of this delivery will have a central component including the tax calculator and document generation and this is part of phase two so we are not going to discuss about it. I have already given you what is this DS set all about and how this structured data will help to have more informed decision. So if you can understand the future of Lloyd's is also using some of the component of LM Tom project. So they are basically building on top of the LM Tom projects. So that's the whole analysis of this topic. I hope you have learned something from this video presentation. Thanks a lot and have a nice day ahead.